Leah Sharibu hushed remarks her birthday in Boko Haram captivity. Members of the civil society, in conjunction with friends and family of abducted Leah Sharibu, have called on the federal government of Nigeria to do more in an effort to secure the release of the abducted Dabchi schoolgirl. They took a peaceful protest walk around the nation's capital, Abuja, in solidarity with Leah, who is marking a second birthday in captivity with the notorious sect members of the Boko Haram. Some of them expressed their disappointment, saying the federal government of Nigeria has been unable to keep its promise to the parents of Leah, assuring the Dabchi schoolgirl will be released. Well, the question of being fair or unfair, it's relative. When you listen to what the government says each time they speak, mm -hmm. they tell you that we're doing our best, we're doing our best. But we're now saying that that best needs to be expressed in action. Deliver Leah, deliver others who are in captivity. If you ask me, this is an abnormal situation that we found ourselves in as a nation. And there's nothing to celebrate. Quite frankly, the government needs to go back to the drawing board and work out how the likes of Leah, Alice and Gada, the Chippo girls, will be given back to their parents. I want to just encourage the federal government to do more. I want to ask them to fulfill the promise that they made to the mother. They had promised the mother that Leah will be released. And so we had expected that by this time, Leah should have been free and with her parents. But she's still in captivity. And so it's really sad. So I want to encourage the federal government. Like others have called that the president should give us an inaugural gift by the freedom of Leah. I am joining the same queue and saying, please give us that inaugural gift. Let Leah be free. We want to remind the government of Nigeria nation that the first job of any government is the safety, security, the sanctity of protection of lives. And still stay with reports on the call for the release of Leah Sharibu since her abduction. Nobel laureate Professor Wally Shinka has also paid and applauded the heroine Dapchi school girl. Leah Sharibu during an event at the prestigious Georgetown University in Washington, United States. The teenager was kidnapped in February 19 last year alongside her schoolmates from their government science college at Dapchi, Yuba State. Likening Leah to the late South African iconic human rights champion and president, Nelson Mandela, Shane Kart said, and I quote, We must celebrate the exception who said no, as it reminded me of Mandela who refused conditional release. End of quote. Now the poet said he could only recite the excerpts because he broke down the last time he attempted to read it in full. Shoinka also did an epic takedown of a Georgetown professor's claim that poverty and desperation were behind the Boko Haram insurgency. He added, and I quote, it was ideological bordering on the metaphysical and we should not underestimate it. We are dealing with something much deeper, end of quote. And prominent Nigerians have also joined the call for Leah Sharibu's release and also to wish her a happy birthday. Reno Mokri, Senator Aline Duma, Senator Ben Mori Bruce and many other Nigerians have commended Leah for her bravery. Earlier, we spoke with Reno Mokri, former aide to ex-president Goodluck Jonathan and founder of the Free Leah Sharibu Movement in London. Marking Leah Sharibu's birthday is very important to me because it shows that she hasn't been forgotten and then it makes her valuable to her captors and the more valuable she is to her captors the more likely that she is not going to be killed and we are praying that by this time next year we'll celebrate her birthday live with her parents well i think the government can do a whole lot better they can do a whole lot better i mean we know for a fact that the current minister of defense said he had back channels to Boko Haram. The government has back channels. And so they could do a lot. Uh, we got privileged information uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact, that Boko Haram are ready to um, negotiate. You know, it was, in fact, I wouldn't say it's privileged information. It was uh, released by the AFP, the Urgence France Press. So we know that they are ready to negotiate. The government 
should negotiate for the release of this girl because this girl is not being kept because uh, um, she's a girl or because of anything. She's being kept because she has refused to abandon her faith in uh, Christ. And, you know, it's not a very good thing for Nigeria to have that classification. I don't think the government is doing enough. They could do a lot more. Um, they could use those back channels. Recently, we saw a girl, Zainab Aliyu, who was um, well suspected to have carried drugs into Saudi Arabia. Now, she said she didn't do it, um, but we saw the priority that the government, President Muhammad Buhari, personally placed on Zainab's freedom. He put himself, personally, machinery in motion to get her released. The government could do a lot more, and I urge President Muhammad Buhari that that same sense of urgency that he showed with the case of Zainab Aliyu, he should show that to Leah Sharibu. Leah Sharibu was 14 when she was uh, abducted. Now she's 16. If the president thinks that this, thing, this matter is going to go away quietly, it will not. You ask me, do I believe that the federal government should negotiate for her release? That's a moot question. This administration, the Muhammad Buhari administration, has negotiated for the release of previous hostages. They negotiated for the release of some of the Chibo girls that they got. They didn't rescue those girls. They paid ransom. What we are asking them to do is treat Leah no different. We want Leah to come out from there. I'm saying to you, in answer to that question, yes, I believe that the government should negotiate for the release of Leah. You asked me how the government can prevent a repeat of this situation. You see, the reason why northern Nigeria right now is under a sec an insecurity blanket is because that area, that part of the world, has the most number of illiterates per square mile. Now, it's not an insult if you are a northerner, it's just a reality. Now, if you do not arrest illiteracy, you're going to keep on arresting Nigerian youths for insecurity because you obviously know that the mind is a terrible thing to waste. Satan, the devil, finds work for idle hands. These people, you have in Kano alone, three million children that are out of school. In northern Nigeria, you have a total of 12 million children that are out of school. Um, I think it was last year, Nigeria overtook India as the number one country with the most out of school children. Now, bear this in mind that India has eight times our population. So it has to be a long-term strategy. So the way to prevent a repeat of this is to massively declare an educational emergency in Nigeria, particularly in northern Nigeria. It doesn't matter if you're spending money from the south in northern Nigeria, because I tell you what, if you don't educate northern Nigeria, a lot of this insecurity is going to come down south to southern Nigeria and then to other West African countries, and it's going to destabilize West Africa, just like Syria alone destabilized West Africa in the 90s.